I remember one night I went out and um, I fell back into temptation and I woke up in the morning, it was Sunday, I woke up in the morning, I'd been going to church um, and I woke up in the morning and I just felt so bad about myself, I was guilty, I was just condemning myself and I uh, woke up in the morning, I'm like, this is all pointless, it's all meaningless, you know, it's just, just if you're real, you know, like, why isn't there anything happening, you know, like, you got to do something or something. And I remember having a prayer that morning and going, if you want me in a church today, you've got to, uh, you've got to do something. You've got to give me a sign or you've got to give me something. And it was like 10 minutes later. And I'd been praying for months that my brothers would see the transformation in my life and that they'd come back to the Lord. And that morning... Like 10 minutes later, I get a knock on the door and my little brother Lachlan opens the door up and he's just like, hey, are we going to church today? And I, I'm not sure. I think he might have gone to like one prayer meeting or something like a little bit. I, I can't remember, but it was like the first time that he'd been to church in like eight or 10 years, you know, it was like 10 minutes later. I'm like, all right, if that's not a sign, I don't know what is. And, uh, got up and went into church and I remember getting in there and we've got three pastors two of them I really liked the way that they shared their message I really liked the way that they expressed themselves that they articulated themselves and uh but one of them and I know it was, I knew it was wrong as well because I knew the spirit can share it powerfully and move through anyone but I just like I didn't enjoy his messages as much he didn't express himself quite as well and I'm like, of all the days, you know, that Lachlan finally comes and he's got to preach, you know? And I, I, I was <laughs> super critical and down that moment. And I have to say, though, from the moment that sermon started, I, it was to that point and still to this day, it was one of the most powerful sermons that I've ever heard in my life. He was basically talking about calling us to purity, and the fact that we need to deal with things of our past. We need to have truth shed into those dark seasons so that the lies can be eradicated and that the enemy will hide in those lies, in those times of darkness. And he'll tell you destructive things about your past that prevent you from stepping into your future and prevent you from having an intimate, loving or a deeper relationship and fellowship with the Lord. And that had been my core issue. Like, and I, the entire time that he was preaching it, I was, it was just like, I felt like he just, he was, he was speaking straight to my core, and it was, just, it, it rocked me. And um, I remember like getting to, the, he, he was saying that you need to deal with these things, you need to get them out and open, you need to express them to whoever you can speak to, if you want to delve deeper into this personal intimate knowing of the Lord if you want to if, if you know if you want relationship you need to deal with these things if you pass you need to understand that you're a new creation that you are holy that you are pure and I remember getting to the end of that sermon and he this is after this this entire sermon that he had done he had just come off a month-long fast and he'd been drinking nothing but water and skim milk and he was still going about his, his daily job. And his daily job was a delivery guy for like heavy boxes and stuff. So for a month, the Lord called him to fasting while going about like doing heavy labor, laborious work. And he said that like through this, the Lord just started speaking to him just like so much more profoundly than he'd ever heard. And that this sermon was what he'd been told he needed to preach to the church. And that there were a lot of people in here right now that need to come to the front and they need to, they need liberation. They need, they need the truth. They need, they need freedom in Christ. And I'm going to get into the end of the sermon and I'm usually very hesitant to go up front or to go, I uh, like receive prayer or anything like that just because my fa it's my family church, you know, and I get nervous around them. And as soon as he finished the sermon, there was not a second hesitation. When he said that, I was straight to the front booking it and I remember just getting to the front and 
I dropped to my knees and it was like every single sin, every single wrong that I'd ever done over the entirety of my life, things that I didn't know, I, I didn't even know they existed, I didn't even know that they'd happened, I had no memory, no recollection of every single one of them, it just like downloaded in images from, through like from, from then until like the earliest childhood memories. Like I, I still don't even remember them now, but it was like to infancy, everything just downloaded in pictures and I was just hit totally with the extent of my unworthiness, of my inability to perform, to earn his love, my inability to, ah, oh, I was just completely overwhelmed. I lost it, you know, and I don't think I'd ever cried that much in the entirety of my life. I just, I, I completely lost it. And I remember like opening my eyes at one point and looking around and seriously, there were like 30 people all in there and they were just, I'd never felt or been in a room with, that was that exposed to the, to the Holy Spirit, like you, 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 the atmosphere of his presence was just so thick and tangible. And I remember thinking, I'm like, no man can do what's happening in this room right now. I don't care how good or persuasive your words are or how heartfelt they are, no person can accomplish what's happening in this room right now. Um, and I remember turning around and tur like, uh, yeah, I, it was like the end of it, I was the last person there. I remember turning around after all of this and there was my brother Lachlan and he was just like in tears as well and it was like he was, he was like dedicating his life or, or to an extent like giving it over to the Lord again and I was just so overwhelmed by his goodness and I just remember going home and just being, I felt like I'd been sanctified, that I'd been washed clean and I was just, I, I just never had that. I, I couldn't remember, I'd never felt so at peace 